Hey y'all, the topic for today's video was voted on by my patrons. If you are interested in voting for topics of future SRPG sapphics or ROM hack recommendations, there is a link in the description and some, although not all, of my video topics will have votes to determine which one I focus on. Uh, you may think that it's a little bit rude of me to lock democracy behind money, but you forget I'm from America. It is our proud American tradition to only allow the rich to have an influence in democracy. In other depressing news, I have to give y'all a content warning for a discussion of sexual assault in this video, both of fictional characters and real life experiences. Additionally, content warning for fetishization of sapphic relationships and just general discomfort at the way that women are written. These are unfortunately heavy topics, so if it's not something you are in the headspace to watch, totally understand that. Go ahead and give this video a skip. Next week I will have something more lighthearted for you. I promise. It'll just be a nice fun video about the Jagan archetype, uh, and, and that's good. Everyone loves Jagan. Um, but this week we have to talk about uh, the Fina X Chris support in Fire Emblem 12. Now, standard disclaimer that I have to give every time that I bring up the plot of FE12, there is some contention about the accuracy of the translation job of FE12, in particular as it comes to supports, and because today's topic is about supports, I feel like I need to address that. For the purposes of this video, I am going to assume that the translation team did a good job with all of the dialogue and all of the supports and everything. I'm just going to assume that it's all properly translated. Uh, if it turns out I'm wrong, or if you have any sort of, like, evidence that that's not the case, uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments, and I'm sorry for that. As far as I can tell, there's not really a consensus as to how accurate the translation is, but I can't find anything that definitively says that it's wrong, and, I mean, Fire Emblem fans have a track record of not understanding how translating works, so it's probably accurate. Uh, but, yeah, just wanted to put that out there in case there's some sort of information that I haven't been able to find in looking into it. Alright, that should be enough housekeeping out of the way. Uh, let's take a deep dive into what is often referred to as the absolute worst support in all of Fire Emblem. Okay, so if you've only seen one screenshot from the Chris and Fina support chain, you've probably seen the one where Chris tells Fina, It's too late for words now. Even if you've changed your mind, I'll undress you by force if I have to. So, this is not a great look. Uh, it makes the rounds on Twitter every now and then, with a caption something along the lines of like, Hey, do you remember when Chris sexually assaulted another Fire Emblem character? Or, isn't this the creepiest rape support in all of Fire Emblem? Or stuff like that. And inevitably, someone will reply and say like, Oh, well, that screenshot is out of context, and it looks a lot better in context, and... Turns into a whole thing because Twitter's always a shit show. Um, so, I've looked into the context. Um... I've read through the entire support chain, uh, and I, I can say it is a little better in context, I guess. Uh, hard for it to be worse, but uh, it's still bad when you have the full context. Um, it's still pretty bad, and arguably when you add even more context, it gets bad in a different way. Like, it gets, I wouldn't say worse, I mean, again, it's hard to be worse, but... With additional context, it starts to paint a picture that the development team thought that woman-on-woman -woman sexual violence was just something that was funny and to be laughed at and not taken seriously in the same way that man-on-woman sexual violence would be. And, um, I mean, this shouldn't be a hot take, but I feel like regardless of who is initiating and who is the victim, sexual violence is not funny and it, sh it should be taken seriously. But, okay. Let's not get sidetracked. I promised you a deep dive into the female Chris X Fina support chain, and I will deliver. So it starts out with Chris training, because all of the Chris supports start out with Chris training. Fina approaches her and mocks her for her obsession with training, as well as her fashion choice, saying that she will never attract boys if she dresses the way that she does. Chris then replies by slut-shaming Fina for wearing skimpy clothing, and the two of them get mad at each other and stomp off. The slut-shaming is definitely bad, but, like, it's not the worst thing that has happened in a Fire Emblem support, and on its own, this feels fairly standard and, I wouldn't say inoffensive, but, like, inoffensive for a C support. The B support is where things start to get a little bit more sketchy. 
Fina offers to show a special dance to Chris that will help her train better. However, she says that she can't do it unless Chris also dances with her and she has brought a dancer outfit for Chris to be able to dance in. Despite expressing that she wants to learn a new skill, Chris gawks at how revealing the clothing is and is very clearly uncomfortable with the idea of wearing it, to the point where she blushes and turns red. At this point, Fina says, Aha, I got you, it was a prank, I can't believe I turned you so red. Chris is understandably upset about this, and Fina says, Hey, you know, if you want to be mad at me, just tease me back so that we'll be even. This brings us into the A support where Chris says that she's reconsidered and does in fact want to learn how to dance with Fina, and she's gone through the trouble to procure two dancer uniforms. She shows them to Fina, and Fina is now shocked because these uniforms are even more revealing than the standard dancer uniforms. We don't get to see what they look like, but Fina says that they might as well be naked. Chris says you already agreed to do this and you can't back out, and this is where we get the infamous screenshot where she says she's going to undress Fina by force if necessary. Of course, immediately afterwards, Chris reveals that she had no intention of actually undressing Fina and that this was just her teasing back as Fina suggested she should in the B support. So, I wasn't going to sexually assault you, it was just a prank, bro. While it is undeniably better that Chris wasn't trying to sexually assault Fina, it's still not great to pretend you're going to sexually assault someone as part of a prank, and Fina is justifiably upset at this at the end of the support. Like, the last note we get is that Fina swears revenge on Chris, but we just never get any follow-up on that. She was clearly not okay with the way that this interaction went, and yet it's played for comedy. Like. Even before we as the audience find out that this isn't meant to be sexual assault, there is an air of comedy underpinning the whole thing. We're supposed to be laughing at the fact that this woman is trying to undress another one against her will. It's pretty clear that the development team doesn't take this consent violation seriously, and I have reason to suspect that the reason they don't take the violation seriously is that it is not a man violating a woman's consent, but instead a woman violating a woman's consent. This is an unfortunately common sentiment. Uh, as a survivor myself who was assaulted by women, um, people don't tend to take those assaults as seriously. There are a variety of reasons for this that's too complicated to go into in just this video, but when it comes to media depictions of assault, and in particular woman-on-woman -woman assault, oftentimes this is because it is not treated as a serious sexual act to begin with, regardless of the consent. Look, many video game companies perceive the majority of their audience to be male, and I believe that Intelligent Systems is no different in this regard. As such, they are trying to appeal to men, and this scene between two women is either supposed to be funny or titillating or both to men. This is also why pornography with lesbians is often very rapey, because the target audience is men and it is simply meant to be titillating to them. The interaction between these two women is not treated as a legitimate sexual encounter in and of itself, it is meant to entertain men. And if you want further evidence of this, then look no farther than the support between Fina and male Chris. Because despite being ostensibly the same character, male and female Chris have pretty different supports with Fina. So the C support is basically the same with the exception of the fact that Fina tells Chris that he won't be very popular with girls if he dresses the way that he does because we need to enforce heterosexuality as the default. The B support is where things get different, however. Instead of asking Chris to wear a special outfit, as happened with female Chris, Fina instead tells Chris that she's going to give him a special dance, no strings attached, but she's a little embarrassed to do it because she's never done it for a men before, and it's pretty revealing. It is pretty strongly implied that this is sexual in nature to some degree, whether it is just a revealing outfit or a special dance in quotation marks, but Chris is notably uncomfortable and embarrassed at this before Fina reveals that, aha, it's just a prank, I'm not actually going to show you the special dance. Chris gets mad, Fina says, well, you need to prank me back, and so then in the A support, Chris comes to do his prank, but instead of threatening to sexually assault Fina, he confesses his love to her. 
This leads Fina to confess her love to him, and then he says, gotcha, and she's mad because he was pretending that he was in love with her when he's not actually. Which, like, again, in fairness, that's a shitty thing to do, and she has every right to be mad at him. Although, let's be clear, it's also justified for him to be mad at her, because while Fina didn't threaten to sexually assault Chris, she did definitely intentionally make him uncomfortable in what's implied to be a somewhat sexual exchange. Like, the degree is up to interpretation, but I think at the very least she was saying she's going to get naked in front of him and he was uncomfortable with that, and she knew he was uncomfortable with that. And like, I'm a nudist, but I don't think it's a hot take to say you shouldn't get naked in front of people who don't want to see you when you're naked. Like, it's again, it's a consent thing. So, a couple of things worth noting. First off, no part of this exchange is as explicitly sex assaulty as Chris threatening to take Fina's clothes off. Additionally, in the portion that would be most easily interpreted as a violation of consent, it is, once again, a woman violating someone's consent. In this case, it is a woman violating a man's consent, and it is, again, seemingly played for laughter. We're supposed to find it funny that Chris is uncomfortable at the offer of Fina getting naked. Well, offer is kind of the wrong word. She's not really offering, she's just saying she's going to do it. As such, I think there's two things that we can reasonably conclude from this. The first is that they view sapphic relationships as inherently less legitimate than heterosexual ones. After all, they were clearly unwilling to cross as many boundaries with male Chris and Fina as they were with female Chris and Fina. The second is that they're willing to play consent violations for laughs as long as those consent violations are being initiated by a woman. And that pattern continues in the only non-Chris support Fina has available to her, her support with Navarre. While this is definitely less offensive than her Chris supports, it still fits into a pattern of Fina being written with haha consent violation is funny. The support revolves around Fina trying to thank Navarre for saving her life and him not being especially receptive to those thanks. This results in her multiple occasions violating his boundaries, whether it comes down to braiding his hair without his consent or following him around in a stalkerish manner in order to try to force him to fall in love with her. This is also played for comedy, and while it's not as bad as the overt sexual assault that happens in the Chris Fina support, it's still boundary violations, you know? She's touching without consent, she's stalking him, it's... Just reverse the gender roles on these, and if it was a guy following a girl around saying that he's going to make her fall in love with him, like, I, I shouldn't have to point out that that's problematic, right? I don't really have much else to say about the situation, other than that Fina's supports repeatedly put women in the situation where they are violating other people's consent and play it off for comedy, and this isn't great. Like, it shows to me that the writing staff either did not have a proper grasp on the concept of consent, or only thought it was important for men to get consent, because repeatedly women do not get consent and it is played as humorous. Thanks for watching the video. If you wouldn't mind giving it a like, it really helps out in the algorithm. And uh, comment below what you think of my analysis. Just, you know, tread lightly, because this is a pretty sensitive topic for a lot of people, myself included. So, you know, just approach it with the care that it deserves. Um, if you're interested in discussing stuff more in depth that won't get caught by YouTube's comment filters, though, there's a link to my Discord below, and, uh, take care of yourselves, now more than ever. I'm, I'm sure this was a rough one for some people to watch, and, uh, you know, be kind to yourselves, be kind to each other, and, uh, take care. I want to once again give a very special thank you to all of my patrons, especially when I tackle topics like this, your support is very much appreciated. That includes my pre-promote tiers, Jamie Collins, Marin Karen, and Thick Mulder. Uh, if you are interested in supporting the channel, there is a link to the Patreon below, but please only donate if you can comfortably afford to do so. More important than that, though, have a wonderful day, and if this video was especially hard for you to work through, give yourself a little treat. You know, you deserve a cookie, or a snack, or whatever sort of reward you want. But take care of yourselves, everyone.